Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Think unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? And <laughs> Welcome to Give Your Walls Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. I'm really excited about this show. Well, you know, I'm always excited about this show, but this one in particular, we are starting our seventh season, and uh, that's just awesome. And I've had a crew that's been with me since the beginning, and Ron Winnegar is, <laughs> it's his birthday, <laughs> so we definitely have to recognize him. And Larry Talbot and Jan Janes, these guys have been with us since the beginning. It's a great team effort. So uh, happy birthday to them. And um, got to play a little bit on the kazoo for one winter because, you know, I tortured Larry one time before. So here's a little bar for, uh, for Ron. <laughs> So you can tell what kind of show this one's going to be today. Well, we're starting off with golf. You notice when we, when we start the show, it's always with my sock monkey head cover. Um, golf is a huge part of my life, and it's something I really enjoy. Well, the other thing that I like to do is I'm on Twitter all the time, and I met author James Ross on Twitter. And we got to talking, developed a relationship, and so he asked me to paint the book cover, the cover for his next book. So you can go to authorjamesross.com and learn all about him, but he's really an awesome guy. So I want to talk about this painting and tell you, you know, some of the considerations that, that you have when you're doing a book cover. The spine would be here, and then about James will go right here, and the title's going to go over here. It's called Oprah's Blade. And so what he asked me to do was he said, you know, I, I've got, I want you to, to do a lost and found barrel. So I got a wine barrel and he listed all the items that he wanted in the painting and arranged them and he loved them and, and I had at it. So it just had a lot of fun. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to show you guys the completed painting for the book cover for James Ross? And then also one that I did just for me that uh, if, if I wasn't doing a painting with, with the considerations of all this space for the text, what I might do with the painting. So that's what we're going to work on today. So I'll pull this aside. Now, the other thing that's different about this canvas is that I've been listening to you guys, and you're on Twitter, and you're telling me, hey, we'd like to see one midstream toward the end and finish one and, and see how far you can get in that manner. So that's what we're going to do today. I've blocked most of it in. We'll start the gloves from scratch. We'll work on this nice old persimmon wood from scratch. And then, so that'll be the beginning stages. We'll do some of this that's more of a middle, middle part of the painting, and we'll be able to actually finish off some segments. So you get a nice sense of... Um, completion all in one show. All right, so what are we going to start with? Ah, the gloves. Gloves are a good, good place to start. I'm going to mix another white. The, th the thing about a white glove in the middle of, of all these warm tones is that if you paint it all white, it's going to be boring. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb. No pun intended. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little, little blue to that and really kind of play up some of the blues in the shadows. It's also fun to add extra color. So I'm adding some phthalo turquoise. Why? 
Okay, well, first of all, it's going gonna, it's gonna <laughs> to blow it down a little bit. But the main thing is, is that I'm on a phthalo turquoise kick right now, and I, <laughs> I just feel like painting with it, so that's what we're going to do. So that's going to be my, my gray. Instead of a traditional gray, it'll be a little more lively. All right, so I have some pure turquoise and white over here, and I'll mix that with just a little bit of red to gray that down. I mean, just a tiny bit. Might have been too much. Yep, got to add a little bit more blue to, to bring it back to gray. There we go. That's a nice gray. I like that. So where do you start? Well, I'm going to start on the shadow side first. Get a small little brush. Use a little bit of medium here. And let's block in some of the shadow side. It looks like it's a little darker right here. And where else is its little shadow on this side here? Same thing over here. We're kind of echoing this this thalo turquoise here as well. They got to play well together. That's a good mid-tone. I'll need to add some darker darks and some lighter lights, but that's all doable. Yeah, I think I need a little more right here. Okay, so to really accentuate some of the shadows, I'm going to add a little more, add some purple in there. Why? <laughs> this is, this is, there is logic behind it, but I'm on a purple kick too. Uh, the purple will make it, uh, the dioxazine purple will make it a darker, will accentuate the shadow, but it's also going to add interest and tie in with the, the other colors that are here. Now, is this a little over the top? <laughs> Yeah, why not? Um, somebody twittered me today and said I was a little eccentric, and um, I took that as a compliment. You know what? Your paintings need to have a personality, so don't don't hold back. If you'd like to give some suggestions or just chat with me, you can twitter me at Shannon Grissom. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so let's add some of this. Uh, let's see if this is too much. A little bit over here. I don't want to, you know what, I think it's too close to, it's a great color, but it's too close to the shadow. So I'm going to add some, oops, I'll add a little bit of blue to that. It's about tripped over my easel. Oh, that's pretty. Hopefully this will work and not be so close to the barrel color. It's a great old wine barrel. I've got to tell you, it made the uh, studio smell great the whole time I had it in there. All right. So a little bit, yeah, that blue is a lot better. Just a little bit on the edges to help with that separation. <laughs> Uh, okay, why am I laughing? <laughs> there was this, I was going to say something about lifting the, the, uh, lifting the glove off of the barrel. And uh, there was this <laughs> commercial way back about bras and lifting and separating. So that just struck me funny. I thought I'd, I thought I'd share the little inside joke with you. Okay. All right, so we've got some dark there, a little bit of shadow here. Leave that alone because you could play with that for a long time. A little blue right under here. Starts to take shape. Okay, and then we need to just uh, add a little bit of light. I'm going to wipe my knife off. Take some white. 
Mix it with some cad yellow deep. That's a good light. And we'll add some mid-tones later. I just want to put this down first and see what it looks like. He had some great ideas as far as what to put in this lost and found painting. So it's fun. I think that one of the fun things about working with James is that uh, he just told me all the items he wanted in the painting, but he didn't try to micromanage how I was going to do it. He just said, here's what I want. Go for it. That's the best kind of commission to get. Okay, so it's light right here. And I did think about how I was going to place these fingers because <laughs> some, some, how can I say this? <laughs> some placements were appropriate and others were not. Okay, so I've got light here. But you know, the fingers themselves, even though they're gloves, they do need to have form. And so I'm going to shadow them just with a little bit of little bit of color around the edges but I'm gonna add a little bit of red like it's reflecting off of this side here so I'm just gonna take a little bit of this red mix it with this cad yellow deep mixture add it around right here like I'll bet right here would we get a little bit do I see this in the reference photo nah I'm just playing with it And is this different than the reference photo? Yeah. What, what's different? If you look at the reference photo, you realize the putter is gone. It's totally gone. I decided to focus on the wood, the persimmon in this painting. Okay, so I'll need a little, gray this down just a little bit now. It's a little bit, uh, that's going to be too dark. I'm going to pull some of this over. Where it's down here a little bit, it's a little bit darker, so not just a straight white. So I'm going to brush that in. I'm applying real light pressure. Let's see, it's a little dark right here. Where else do I see a little bit? A little bit right there, too. And then I'll take some straight white and kind of clean it up a little bit with a cleaner brush. And I really am literally going right into the straight white. All right, so the top of this, I think that comes up a little more. So I'll change that and just adjust my drawing a little bit. This is light right up here. Where else is it light? Right up at the top here. And then I'm going to scrub it in and tie it all together. There we go. Lots of color in this white glove. And then I'm just going to clean up the edges. Oops. OK, so what happens when you draw out, out, out of the place you wanted to be? Well, this is great. On a dry surface, I totally, I totally grew, the, grew this, <laughs> this finger. It was getting a lot bigger than it needs to be. So it's on a dry surface. Not that big a deal. I can take some medium and I can just kind of scrub it out, wipe my brush, move it over, wipe my brush until you get it all off. Now if it's on a wet surface, you're kind of out of luck till it dries. <laughs> but, but when it's uh, dry like this, it's great. There. 
All right, so let's clean up these edges again. One right here. So this is not the time to use a scruffy brush. Let's see how far down does this go. I think it needs a little more of a blue tinge to it. So I'm going to move this down. There we go. Same thing with this. A lot of time on just a little tiny glove and clean this, clean these areas up here. There. All right, needs a little bit of light on the bottom, and we're we can move on. Well, that wasn't light. <laughs> That's because I didn't clean my brush off first before I put it down. There. I'm going to put it down and leave it. Really, I am. All right, so that's how you'd block in the glove. These old woods, I just love them. I love the way they look. When I first started golfing, I had had this old set that I tried to use, and they said, "No, you, you know, you, you can't be going out with those clubs." But um, they make beautiful paintings, and so now I actually go and, and look for old woods to paint because they're they're they have such rich color. Well, there's a lot going on in the wood, and if you uh, to paint all the detail, God, you could you could do a whole show on just just the ridges and lines in here. But I'm going to show you how to block it in so you get the look of the wood right away, and then uh, the detail comes later. I'll show you that on the other painting. So where would we start? Well, it's got a little, I think we'll work on this shaft first. And why, why am I picking the shaft first? Well, because this is a tiny little area. And in, I don't know about you guys, when you're, when you're writing an essay, you remember being a kid and writing it longhand and, and you start off really nice and tidy and by the end of the essay you're all over the place? Well that's kind of how I am in the painting process. So so in the you know in this if I've got to be careful, now's the time to do it because the longer the show goes on, I forget about everything and um, uh, <laughs> there's no way I'd be able to to work on that kind of detail. So I'm gonna overstate the middle. I'm going to start right in the middle with some light. Why? Because it'll be gone later, and if I put it down now, it's easier to go over white than to put white over dark. All right, so I've got a fairly straight line. I have to tell you, though, when I painted the other, uh, the other wood, I actually took a straight edge so that I get it fairly even. It all, it's all works. It's all good. All right, so for something to have form like this, it needs to be light, light here. The light's hitting this side here, and then dark on the edges, and that's what we're going to put in next. I'm going to use this little mixture here, this gray, because it's done. It'll work. It's a nice, cool mixture. A little bit of, need a little bit of medium. Let's see how this looks. A mall stick would be great. What is a mall stick? It's a stick that you put on here and you can rest your hand so that you steady your hand. Um, if you don't have anything like that, you're just winging it, putting your finger down and using that to brace you does help. But when you're working on a big piece, you got to move it anyway. So I say just go for it. You can always clean it up after it dries. There. All right, and then we're going to put, see how that's covered up some of the white? We're going to put that on the bottom as well. Might help. There we go. All 
Okay, there's things you things you know that you can't really see is that that um, if you know about a club, typically a club is thinner and then it gets wider as it goes up toward toward the grip. So I'm flaring this out a little bit, even though I can't see if it's doing that. Of course, it'd help if I'd put my reading glasses on, but you know what, when you're painting, the best way to see just big shapes, not focus on the detail, if you, if you need reading glasses, don't wear them. They'll, that'll help you just see the big, the big picture. I'm not kidding. Okay, so we've got a dart there, and I need to, to darken it even more. So I'm just going to go straight into this purple. See how these little things take a little bit of time. And it's growing, just like the other, just like the glove. So we'll clean that up after. All right, that's a good base there. Let's see what we can do about this wood. I, I think it needs a nice, nice black tone. I'm going to make black by mixing some dioxazine purple, a little bit of red and some ultramarine blue. Okay, so I made a mahogany. <laughs> but it's going to work. Maybe not for this section, but for another part of the club. Beautiful color. All right, and then I'll add some more ultramarine blue. There we go. Cooled it down a little bit. I don't use straight black very often. It's too cold for me. Okay, so let's add some of the dark in. Right here. That's reading a little purple, so I'm adding a little red to that. But that's okay, because we want it to be purple against this... Uh, I don't want it to be the same color as this wood. So when you're basing these in, basically put in the base the basic shapes, the details come later. All right, so that's that's close. This kind of goes up like that. And it does have a little bit of uh, a little bit of dark on the edge. And then to tie that in, I'll move this down the shaft a little bit. Part of this is not going to make sense because I didn't, I didn't make the background tidy. So everything is a relationship thing. So in order for, for the whole thing to work, I've got to add a little bit of the background color in and bring it back up. Get rid of this white hair. I'm pulling it up so that it doesn't look like I just outlined it. If it's not the same color as what's there, that's fine. There's a lot of variation in wood tone in just about everything. Oh, a little more red to that. 
There we go. That's better. So I'm cleaning out, you know, cleaning up, making this edge clean by going around the background rather than drawing an edge around the shape. Same thing over here. Relationships are tricky, aren't they? So when you're working on something, you can't just work on one area. You've got to say, okay, well, what, what, what's happening around it? Pay attention to that. Because sometimes it's not what you're painting that needs adjusting, it's, it's the object around it. There we go. A little bit of weight to that. Bringing it right down to the barrel. Now we can move on to the rest of the club. Okay, so it's easy to get sucked into Twitter. It's easy to get sucked into social networking. And um, so I had a friend, friend was saying, you know, that uh, she wasn't painting because she's spending so much time on Twitter and and uh, other social networks. And uh, have you guys ever seen Bill Cosby? He does this this skit about the chicken heart, and it's a scary radio show, and the chicken hearts taking over the town, wiping out the town. Oh my God! It's just ah, uh, it's. It's, it's devastating, and, but the kid doesn't even know that if he just turned it, turned it off, <laughs> it would go away. So, um, I, I'm, when, when you think about distractions that you have, I love to Twitter, and I'm definitely hooked on social networking, but you get distractions when you're wanting to paint from family, from friends, from the phone, from everything else that, that, uh, that's in your everyday life. So it's just a matter of, of making a decision on, hey, I'm blocking out this amount of time, and this is what I'm doing right then. So even if you just give yourself an hour, it's amazing what you could get done in an hour. And um, so don't let that deter you. Just give yourself a set amount of time and go for it. Okay, so we've got that blocked in. We've got a little bit of red here in the middle. Love that. I gotta tell you, sometimes I, I try not to pick up the phone when I'm painting. And every once in a while, I think I'll, I'll pick it up in the middle of a painting and I'll think, oh, it'll just be something quick. Well, it's never something quick and, and it usually breaks my, my concentration, so I really try not to do that. Okay, so that's a reddish tone there. We'll put some ochre on the edge. I'm grabbing pretty much some straight tube color with dirty brushes. This is the dirty brush method. Not, not ochre enough. There we go. See, I told you that once we got started, it was, it was going to be not as tidy. All right, so we want some ochre right here. I'm not doing any details. No wood grain. 
Trying to get the basic shapes. I think it went something like that. Yeah, and then there's some light on this side as well. And I'm pushing this right up into the other color. Just lightly blending them. Okay, so it's a little dark on this side here. All right, what's going on over here? It's a little dark over on this side and it needs to be redder. So I'm gonna take some straight red. Mix with this dark and lock that in. It's looking a lot like that background, so I'm gonna have to, something's going to have to change, and I don't think it's going to be the wood. The wood of the wood. That gets confusing. Okay, I'm just blending it into here. And the same right over on this side too. Okay, so this isn't a, a finished wood, but it's a great way, it shows you just the basic steps to block this in. All right, so you're, you're starting to take some shape, starting to get some form. If you want to tie it in with this color so that it doesn't look plastic, you add a little bit of warm right here. A little bit of warm right here. And we're going to move on to another area. All right, what's a quick way to get some separation? Well, in this case, I think, I think lightening up the background would be great. That would, that would instantly um, make this thing pop. So we're going to do that. So we started off with some contemplative parts of the piece, and now we're going to paint Fast and Furious. It's good for our camera people. All right, so I'm going to try some, let's try some of this ochre right over, the, oh, yuck. <laughs> I was going to put that right over the top, but I did not like that. All right, so I'm going to add a little red to that. There we go. That, that made it, can I just tell you that made it much worse? So what happens? If you're on a dry surface like this, you're in luck. You just take a paper towel and take it off. This is one of those cases where I was just going to throw some color in and I thought that might work. But you know what? It's not going to. <laughs> so, so I will have to actually mix a nicer color for that transition. All right. So I'm going to take some white, some yellow ochre, And if we're going to go a little bit closer to what's actually in the reference photo, maybe mix it with some of this red. One way to test is to actually hold your knife up and see if you like it before you put it down. I could take, um, we've got two options. I could take all day just to clean this background up. And that makes me tired. I'm thinking, let's try a dark, dark background and see if that works even better. So we're going to glaze instead. This is called Plan B. Um, I think if I, there are two things. If I ran into the situation and I was in the studio, it would be just like it is when I'm on TV. If I'm in the mood to really fuss with it, I would create all these different colors. But if I want some instant gratification, I like to glaze. So, how do you glaze? Take a lot of medium and dip your brush in it. I'm going to grab some straight purple. Maybe with some red. Yeah. And just make it darker here. Right over the top. That'll make that pop too. And I'm going to, okay, that's the other thing. Instead of painting around the, the uh, club, I'm going to go right over the top of it. I'm 
adding a little more red over on this side. There we go. A little more red over here. Just throw it in so that we get this separation. I'm also scribbling it too so that it looks more like wood grain. Go right over the top. There we go. Right over the top of the club. That's important. Otherwise your strokes, strokes look like, <laughs> like they're running away from each other. Throw a little more on this side. See with the glaze you can still see what's underneath. It's just pushing it back a little further. I like it. And it's a lot faster. I mean, we spent half the show working on, on a couple little areas. It's nice to have something happen quickly. Going right over the top of that and this. Okay, so that's pushed it back, yet you've got this bleed through here. So you can take, you can tidy it up a little bit, but there's only so much you can do when it's wet. So I'm just going to take the brush and kind of tidy this up here. I'm light, I'm just pressing lightly. There, that's, that's about all you can do while it's wet. And I'll get a brush that's a little more sympathetic to that color. Tidy this up here and move on. Okay, we would do the same kind of thing right here in this wood to, to tidy that up. Let's add maybe some more blues and grays in here. Tie that in. I just took some straight blue that we used on the glove and I'm going to add that. I'm lifting this up so you can also see. And then I'll Grab some of this mixture we had over here. I don't think it's red enough. Imagine that. There we go. And I'm going to tidy up this area as well. Whoops. Forgot I had it up there. Good thing I didn't say something bad. Okay. Going right up into the shadows right over here. We're unifying, unifying everything by doing this. Covering up the canvas. Okay, and tidy up down here as well. Now this little area helps the barrel have some dimension and turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some warmth to this area here and that will help this whole thing look like it's turning around a corner. So maybe a little, little cad yellow deep and some white on the edges. Some lighter white in the center. I'm going to put it down so that I don't knock it. I'm, <laughs> I'm applying more pressure, so you got to be a little more careful. And then I'm blending. So that's got some more warmth. And then toward the edges, it's a little cooler. So I'll take that uh, gray mixture that we had. Reinstate that. Might be a little over the top with purple, but hopefully by the time we blend it, it'll be all right. Okay. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of that same light color up here just for some added interest because it was uh, getting too stodgy there. Now I need a good dip brush to blend it. So I'm taking a brush with, it has very little, uh, it, it's very short. So the bristles are really short and it's dry. And so because it's short, you have more control, I'm going to be able to scrub it in and really blend it. Starting in the middle first, and working my way to the edges. Wiping my brush. I'm leaving some of the stuff untouched. So there's some places where I didn't apply any paint. There, that helps, helps it turn. I'm going to do the same thing with blending these little squigglies I put in. And you'll notice that the shadows for the gloves will need to be reinstated because I went a little overboard. But you know that's the whole process is just dancing back and forth. And I'm going to push it again right into this area because I don't want it to look like I turned around. Okay, that's good. So now I'll reinstate the shadows. All right, so it's a little bit dark right under here. This is what's going to make the gloves start to pop. A little bit dark under here. Mostly the, the light's coming from over here. Of course, I have changed the light source a little bit with this dark background. And you do want to try and keep it consistent. There are times when I, when I uh, purposely let it just run amok because it adds to the surreal quality. Okay. I changed the shadow a little bit and um, I'm gonna let it ride, that's fine, that'll work. Uh, a little bit under here. I'm going to add a little dark under here. And where else is there some shadow while I'm here? Okay, right here on this cloth. And I just picked the towels for the still life just for their color and for their dra draping quality. I wanted a variety of texture and color. Okay, well, it's got to come down and shadow this as well. And what I'm doing is I didn't change the color, I just um, applied less pressure, almost like a glaze. And that kept it uniform. I'm going to add just a little bit on this side. Just a touch. And then where else did we lose it? See, anytime you put this down, you have to reinstate some of these areas that are lost. I'm lifting this up so we can see what's under here. Goes about something, something like around there. Things were happening. Okay, so now I'll blend this other area. There. Okay, so how can we kick up, you know, I'm tempted to just work all over the place, but I, I definitely need to stand back and say, okay, well, wh what do we want to work on next? Well, let's punch up the, the red on the towels and just kind of tidy up overall the, the entire painting. It's good to work all over first before you pick apart one area. This could be darker down here. So maybe we'll start with the, the turquoise glaze and move over to the reds. Again, was there, is there any reason I went to the turquoise first? No, it just it, it sounded like fun. I mean, it's just where I wanted to go.
I'm going to tone it down with just a little bit of violet. Add a little bit of excitement to that. And you know, it, it needs some more strength. I'm going straight into the white hair. There we go. It was too much medium and not enough uh, pigment. And that just won't do. I do get a little medium happy sometimes. There we go. So it's like by the time you get, you start at the bottom, by the time you get to the top, you have less pigment on your brush. And that helps makes it a lighter color. And then a little bit darker down as it falls. Again, I'm not dipping my brush back in. Okay, so I need to stand back, see if that's working. Yep, it is, it is. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to separate the edges and we'll move on to the red. Oops. Okay, so I did a little too much there, but that's all right. I just blend it away. And that's easy to do because I, you know, my tendency is to overblend. I've become a lot better over the years at just letting, th you know, leaving things be. Believe it or not. Okay. So we've got the turquoise. We want to clean up the red a little needs to have some light at the very top. I'm putting it back square on the easel because I'm going to be beating this canvas pretty hard. So where do I see the light? Pretty much right at the top. Some more hair, some more there, and I'm, I'm liking this light right separation right here. And then again on the top of this one, a little light hair. And I'm going to just go down the line and make it a little bit darker and darker and darker red. Scribble some more over the top of this, leaving some of what was there to show through to add interest. Really beefing up the color. That's awesome. So it's, you know, it's, it's different than the James Ross painting. But it's, it's going to be an interesting companion to it. All right, so what about this composition? Do I like that? Do I not? Let's, let's just break that space up a little bit. It's got to be a little bit darker color. That wasn't working. There we go. I'm going to leave that alone. Throw some red on this side. I don't think I like this dark hair, so I'm changing it. I'm adding red over the top. It was in a little cooler moment. Sometimes cooler heads prevail, but usually not in my paintings. There, got to leave that alone. All right, let's move over to the blues. You notice how quickly, once you've established some shapes, that you can throw stuff over the top and it really starts to take more shape. All right. A little bit dark here. And I'm just going to put some dark right under that. 
There we go. I'll blend that a little bit later. A little bit of blue right on this side. Even some turquoise to tie it in. What happened was, I didn't mean to put a little turquoise on the brush, but it, but it happened. So you might as well play with it and, and uh, see if you can make it work. All right, I'm going to make this part here darker because I'm pushing attention back over here. So it may be lighter in the photo, but that's not how I want it to end up. Okay, the other thing I want to do is I want to gray down this umbrella. It's beautiful the way it is, but it's got to be Got to be grayed down. I can do that with a glaze. Might be able to do it with this same. Let's see if I can get away with this. I'm going to go right over the top. Okay, this is called scumbling. This was not a glaze. I did not add any medium to it. I'm just scumbling right over a dry paint, dry surface. Okay, so that's that's cool. You're getting the shadow effect from the. Uh, I'll just maybe add a little bit here just to tie it in, but you're getting that shadow effect, and it's still reading as white even though it's in the shade. This needs to be that shape bothers me, and I'm thinking that needs to be almost a black dark shape in order for it to work. So I'm going to just do that. Nobody needs to know what that is, even if it's part of the hat, I don't care. I don't want, it, it's an awkward shape, and I don't want to call attention to it, so cover it up. Don't be a slave to your painting. Okay, so that's starting to take shape. You're really getting a sense of, of uh, where this painting is going to go. This needs to be dark right under here, too. We're going to clean up this edge. Then you take a look and say, gosh, you know, what's next? Well, this hat needs to be a little, I'm just going to scumble over the top of that too. So this, what I'm doing today, is like stage two of a painting. You've blocked it in, then you start adding some of the details. And stage two of a painting, takes up three quarters of the painting time. <laughs> you do this for a long time before it actually comes to life. A little bit of, I'm gonna add a little bit of ochre. There we go. And I'm gonna take some, you know, just, just to uh, really shake things up a bit. Let's, let's add some. I haven't used any Indian yellow, which you know takes over everything, right over the top of that hat. And it's going to be way too much over the top, but we'll tone it down. Sometimes I like to use Indian yellow as a base, paint that, paint that underneath and everything else on top, because it has that warm glow no matter what you put on top of it, it has a nice warm glow. And you know blue and yellow are happy together. There we go. I mixed, I picked up some of this red from up top here and I'm just going to swirl it into the hat. So because we're glazing over the top, you can still see some of what was going on underneath and you can see, still see some of the weave. A little bit of warmth back here. There, that's tidying that up a bit. Things are starting to come together. Great, so now you're getting an idea of how to block it in, in certain areas, as in the glove, and blocking in the wood. How to glaze and actually scumble and throw in colors over the top. And then basically from there, you just take it a step further and keep playing and keep playing and keep playing. And, and the details, the things that you see the first that are kind of fun, are usually the last things that you paint. 
So we'll pull up, we'll pull up the finished painting. And talk about what's different. What's different is that things are blended a little bit more and simply reflined. There's still not a lot of detail here, but you get the illusion of the folds. You get the illusions of the shapes. Um, I added some fun color just because. You know, it's, it's just great to add some pinks and purples in unexpected places. Did throw in a little bit of detail over the wood. Now, the putter is not in that painting, so that's, we'll pretend that's not there. But you get a sense of where, what we worked on today and where this one will go. So I hope that you take what you love. I love golf, so take what you love and do a painting of it. Make sure you give yourself plenty of uninterrupted time. And you can give your own walls some soul. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shannon Grissom.